Whenever people are channel surfing on TV, one thing that's sure to make them stop and watch me is when they see all the colorful and amazing birds that surround me. I'm Mark Marone. Welcome to the Pet Shop. And when you see my birds, I've had some of these birds more than half my life, you might say, gee, that looks like a fun kind of pet to have. Maybe I should too. And it might be good for some people, and it might be bad for others. For me, all animals are great, and I especially love birds. Some birds, like Harry the Scarlet Macaw here, and my hyacinth macaw, the big blue macaw, Remus, I've had them well over 20 years. They followed me through every aspect of my life. And even Darwin, the African gray parrot here, he grew up with me on TV. He's 15 years old now and is an accomplished TV performer. He's trying to learn how to take my glasses off like Harry usually does. All birds fascinate me, whether it's a simple bird like Edith, my pigeon, or these beautiful cockatoos like Godfather, the Triton cockatoo, or Dante the raven, or small birds like the little cockatiels that are in the cage underneath Dante. All birds make great pets and they're all extremely fascinating and they're a lot smarter than we give them credit for. Scientists have proved that ravens like Dante have cognitive skills on par with dolphins and with chimpanzees. That means that birds are smarter than dogs. Sorry Dixie, I don't mean to disappoint you. What makes them truly different from dogs and cats and bats and turtles is the fact that they have feathers. That's what really makes birds unique. Think about it. Bats can fly, turtles have beaks, reptiles have scales on their feet, but the only animal in the entire world that has feathers are birds. Hey, Mark, where are the birds we keep as pets bred? Where do they come from? Where do these birds come from? Well, all these birds that we see here that I, we keep as pets have wild relatives that live in other parts of the world. Darwin's relatives live in West Africa. Harry's relatives live in Central America. Godfather's relatives live in Indonesia. However, the birds that you see here that people keep as pets since 1986 have all been born here. Before 1986, people did import birds into the United States from other countries, but since then, they're all born here by people who are concerned about them and people who breed them specifically to be kept as pets. So if you see a bird in the pet shop, you don't have to worry that you're depleting the world's source of birds or anything like that. Those birds are bred specifically to be pets. When we're thinking about a pet bird, we have to realize that forget about what an animal does wrong, because in a bird's mind, they can't do anything wrong. But just the animal's presence itself sometimes doesn't suit our lifestyle. You may not want to have a three foot long, two pound bird like Remus or Harry here. You may not want a bird like Godfather, who when he screams can make glass break. You may not want a big bird that runs loose around your house and can't be housebroken. You should see what the back of my shirt looks like. You might want to get a smaller bird that's happy to live in a large flight type cage like the canaries here. Remember, we have to revolve ourselves around birds because we're not going to change them just because we want to change them. Darwin likes to chew on my glasses, and I can tell him as many times as I want, don't do it, but he's gonna, still going to do it. Birds do what works for them. Plus, their diets are different. They need to be kept very, very clean. Birds have a whole separate husbandry situation from dogs, cats, rabbits, guinea pigs, and all the other animals that we commonly keep as pets. Birds have been kept as pets for even longer than some of these other animals here. The Romans kept parrots. The Romans didn't keep guinea pigs, that's for sure, and parrots were probably kept back as pets even further than that in Central and South America. So there's something about birds that's always fascinated people. Even people who don't like birds, when they see a bird with colorful feathers, right away they stop and they look and say, gee, that's a pretty bird. Even if it's a pigeon, like Edith. When people see Edith here, they say, gee, is that a pigeon? I go, yeah, that's a pigeon. That's one of my best pets, that's Edith. And they go, oh, but she's a pigeon. But still, pigeons make very, very nice pets. Pigeons are associated with city streets and filth and things like that, but they didn't choose to live that way. We put them there. A pigeon can make just as nice a pet as a canary, like these canaries we have here, or cockatiels. 
Birds don't have to be big and impressive looking, like Harry or Godfather, to be nice pets. The smallest, most insignificant bird can still be a nice pet and can still give you just as much pleasure as any of the big birds we have here. But remember, they are birds and we have to take that into consideration with their diet, their cleanliness and housing, and exactly what type of bird that we should have a pet. We want a bird that will complement our lives and not complicate it. I'm Mark Marone, and to learn more about your pet, check out the pet shop. And remember, always try to look at the world from your pet's point of view. What are you looking at? What are you viewing at, darling? <laughs>